Hey guys, Nick here. So today we will be taking a look at the 2025 Honda Rancher and Honda Foreman. Now we're gonna talk about quite a few different things here. We're gonna talk about the trim levels you get to choose from for 2025, what has changed there from 2024. We're gonna talk about the differences between the Foreman and the Rancher, if it's worth spending the extra money and getting the extra features of the Foreman, or if the Rancher is just enough for you, as both these machines are really geared for two different kind of audiences. We're gonna as well go for a full tour around each of these machines, explain all the features of them, how to operate them, service life, and then finally we'll take them for a spin at the end. I'll give you some of my final thoughts towards the end of the video. So let's get started. So for 2025, let's start there. These two machines are gonna be visually the exact same from 2024, besides a price increase. The only difference that it really comes down to for 2025 is Honda has eliminated a lot of their models you get to choose from in the Rancher and the Foreman lineup. The Rancher, you had about 10 or 12 different Rancher options to pick from. With the Foreman, it was about four, but now they got the Foreman down to two models and we got the Rancher down to four models. So Honda's really cut back on what you kind of get to pick and choose from in terms of options. And unfortunately, we still haven't had any large updates yet. Now, when it comes to the Rancher and the Foreman, let's first talk about what you get with the Rancher. And then we'll talk about the Foreman. The Rancher, you get a 420cc fuel-injected, liquid-cooled, single-cylinder engine paired up to a five-speed semi-automatic transmission. Of course, we're looking at both foot shift models here today. Just so we clarify that, we are not looking at any of the automatic or ES versions with the push button shift. We are looking at pure base model in terms of Honda's lineup for four wheel drive systems here. Now, both of these models share a solid rear axle. So those, those rear wheels are always locked the same amount 100% of the time. And then when you engage four wheel drive on the Rancher, that's gonna make it limited slip up front. Now, moving on to the Foreman, you get a 518cc fuel injected, liquid cooled single cylinder engine. You get a five speed semi-automatic transmission like the Rancher. You get two-wheel, four-wheel drive, but you get a diff lock on the Foreman. You as well get that third headlight, and you get that front brush guard on the machine, and you get a 12-volt cigarette outlet towards the front as well. And a step up from the Rancher, you get a bigger wheel and tire setup. Also, more suspension travel that's going to have a little bit more of a stiffer setup to handle a heavier load. Now with the Rancher, you get a 3.9-gallon fuel tank with a 1.3-gallon reserve. The front rack is rated for up to 66 pounds and 133 pounds on the rear rack. And now with the Foreman, that also has a 3.9 gallon fuel tank with a 1.3 gallon reserve, but this is rated for 88 pounds on the front rack and 176 pounds on the rear. So now let's talk about pricing on these two models. Now as I say the pricing, the real pricing will what straight from Honda I will have on screen. So my numbers that I say verbally might be a little bit different than what's on screen. So just follow what's really on screen, but you basically have a 72.49 base MSRP, but then you have a destination charge of about 620 on the Rancher, which is gonna put you a little over $7,800 getting into the Rancher. And then with the Foreman that has a base MSRP of 8049 and then again you have that 620 destination charge that goes across all their honda atvs so you're looking at about 86 out the door on the foreman now again those prices are without including any dealer setup fees or anything like that so depending upon the dealer you go through we'll kind of fluctuate that price depending on the dealer of course but if you use my trusted dealer jack motors they usually honor the pricing you see right what I'm showing you on screen, and even sometimes even give you some discount on that stuff, depending upon the programs that are going on with Honda. So you might be wondering, well, is the price increase in the Foreman worth spending the money, or should I just stick with the Rancher? And it honestly comes down to what is your intended use for the machine? Nine times out of 10 for us here, someone that buys the Foreman is someone that's gonna do a lot of work with it, is a farmer, and just doing a lot of recreational use with it that they're gonna be out in, out in fields, working, getting around, stuff like that. The person that's gonna buy the rancher is the homeowner that wants to just use the machine every once in a while around the property. They don't have a huge amount of land, but
but they have enough that of course they want an ATV. Maybe they want to throw a snow plow on it and plow in the winter. You don't need to buy a foreman to plow a driveway with. The rancher is going to do it just fine. Unless you have a huge, very long, large driveway, then the foreman might be nice because you can throw a little bit bigger of a blade on it, but the wrench is going to plow really nicely. And what's also nice about these machines is they're still fairly light. They're still in about a 600 pound class machine. So you can really still throw these around. When it comes to a more sporty feel, I like the Rancher. The Rancher has a little bit more pep to it. The Foreman, the way the motor is bigger, is really more for a uh, performance standpoint in terms of pulling and pushing and really working it than a pure performance machine in terms of getting the highest horsepower out of the motor. Now, I personally own a couple Ranchers. I got a four tracks, stuff like that. So I really enjoy the Ranchers. But if I'm gonna buy a machine where I'm plowing a larger driveway with and I'm really gonna be working with it, then that's where I start to really kind of favor that foreman, getting a little bit more towing capacity, a little bit more pull power with it. Having that diff lock is also a very nice feature. And so that's the stuff you gotta kind of weigh out yourself, the pros and cons of really, how are you gonna use this machine realistically? I'm more just trying to help you understand what the differences are of these machines in terms of use and really they're where you're geared for if you're someone that's just going to be doing that real farm heavy working with it that's where that foreman's going to shine if you're just a homeowner want to do some light work with it get around the property and maybe throw a snow plow on it in the winter then the rancher is a great choice for that and it's they're both going to do the job super well but with that being said let's go for a tour around these machines and let's start with the rancher now, when it comes to colors to choose from, these are both finished in a uh, black forest green, they call it, which is a real deep green. I got it here in the shade, so you kind of see it now. You can also get this finished in a hero red, I believe, and you can as well get it in a new camo they came out with, which I haven't seen in person yet. And the red, they keep changing back and forth, so I'm kind of 50-50 on it. I never know how it's going to look. Sometimes it's more pink, like the older reds, and sometimes it's more deep. But with the new camo, it has a more youthful kind of glow. It kind of looks something like they're trying to pull off a more sporty performance look to it, which is kind of odd. Some people, I feel like it's going to be a love-hate with the new camo. Some people are going to love it. Some people aren't going to like it because it's going to look less like a real camo trying to blend in and more like something that's trying to look sporty. Now, the layout of both of these two units is basically the same. So I'm going to show you around the Rancher. And then when we get to the Foreman, I'm going to explain what the differences are on that once we're in front of it. So we don't kind of cover the same thing, but like previous models, under the front kind of thing there, you got a little storage compartment. Under this cover is top of your coolant reservoir and your radiator fill. So you kind of come over here to our right side and you're gonna see a lower and an upper level for your coolant check. So that makes it very easy to check on these machines. Now, when we come to this side, which has our two wheel four wheel drive. We'll get in all the handlebar stuff when we sit up there, but our oil check is right here. Dipstick, check, fill, all right there. Sides in, pushes in, two push pin points. And again, all this is really the same on the foreman, basically identical. You put a ball right there in the back, drum brake, got a little storage compartment right in there kind of fit gloves in, etc. Our seat pulls off right here, flip that over. Air box right there, pretty simple. Pull up two points, slide forward. We're gonna flip this over. Now our owner's manual and the low tire pressure gauge because these tires only hold about four and a half PSI in them and if you want to know what to put in your tires, it tells you right on the fender right there, which is quite nice. But getting back to the back here, with this off, we're going to see our battery, a little fuse box, toolkit here on the left side, all of our main electronics, and that's really all that's under there. Now you see a top view of that other storage compartment. You can almost fit a second battery in here if you want to run for extra accessories, you could always do that. Um, but of course you wouldn't want to make it where it's double the voltage. I'm going to close this all up and we're going to get into the dash. Now sitting in the dash here, so they're going to start off, you have two keys, there's a key number on it. So when you get your machine, file one of the keys with all your paperwork at home. So if you ever lose a key, 
bring it to a locksmith and get a second key set. Fuel right there, it's best to run a non-ethanol higher octane fuel in it, like a 91, 93. You can run like a cheaper 87 in them, but it's just better for all the injectors and everything. Run a little bit better, higher octane. Another typical Honda thing is these love to crank all the new Honda machines. So if it cranks three, four, five times over and it doesn't start, good rule of thumb is to let it crank two, three times, turn the key off, turn it back on, do it again, and it should basically fire right up. You'll find you'll run into that more in the winter. They won't fire until they build certain oil pressure. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now on the left side, we have our two-wheel four-wheel drive. Come to a stop, and you'll see it shows it right there on the dash, right below the neutral sign. Four-wheel, two-wheel drive. You have a neutral light. To put this into reverse, pull the red lever, pull all the way back on the brake, and then you shift down into reverse, and then you shift back up with the foot shift, to go back into neutral. These are semi-automatic. So no, there is no clutch on these. This is a front brake, this is a rear brake, and we have a second rear brake right there. Now on our left side, we have emergency kill. We have an on off for our headlights, a high and a low beam right there. Start, of course our throttle on the left side. Now in our dashboard, check engine light, temp light right there. Gear tells you what gear in out of five. Fuel level, of course, in the bottom there. Time, we have an odometer. Of course, you got a trip. Coolant temperature, hours, 100 mile or 20 hours. So both of those are a countdown. Whichever this machine counts down from and reaches first, that wrench will pop up on the main screen indicating this is due for its first service. Now let's go look at and take a look at the differences with the Foreman. Alrighty, so now that we are sitting on the Foreman now, there's three or about four differences, I guess, between this and the Rancher. Really two or three of them are features. You don't have the two wheel, four wheel shifter there anymore, so it's more like a storage compartment. In front of that, we have a 12 volt cigarette outlet, which is nice if you wanna power any extra external like LED lights, blinky lights, stuff like that, you can do that. You get the storage compartment right here, which you don't get on the Rancher. Of course, the third headlight, and then all the other additional features like the brush guard, bigger wheel and tire setup, a little bit more suspension, heavier suspension in this. But the big thing is the diff lock here. So the display is also a little bit different, just that it has the spot where it'll flash orange. So while you're running the machine, you just push this button in, hit four wheel drive, and now once you hit four wheel drive and you've moved the machine a little bit or you're driving it around and you find that all your wheels are spinning and you still can't get through the mud, you have one more backup, slide this up, that engages your diff lock, which is an orange flashing light there. Now what that does is it completely locks the front differential so that all four wheels are spinning the same amount and not one wheel will free up like the Rancher does. So that's why it flashes. Now to disengage it, you just slide it down simply goes away, normal four wheel drive, limited slip up front, so you can drive around just fine like that, or just stick it in two wheel and keep it in two wheel drive, depending upon the conditions. But let's go drive around a little bit and I'll give you guys my final thoughts.
Now, as we wrap the video up here, I want to kind of talk about some of the things that I feel Honda could kind of update and do better with them. I think it'd be really nice to see a new different tire set up on these, a little new different graphics in terms of body. I think they could rework the body. Yamaha does something nice where they kind of do a more of almost like a powder coated to the corners of their fenders. So when you, you know, hit your boot on them and stuff like that, they don't scuff as easily. These are all real kind of light plastic that are glossy. So they scratch really easily. So something a little more robust like that would be nice. I think we deserve more LED headlights cross on these machines, a newer display. And as I mentioned this, Honda has just recently updated the Rincon to now a Rubicon automatic. I think they're in the right direction with that, but I really think what they did with that machine is what they should have done to the Rubicon with the LED headlight, the LED display, uh, the t wheel and tire setup on that. I really think that's what they should have done on the Rubicon. And the LED headlight cluster on that is a little bit kind of goofy at first, but it's grown on me over time. I just think the shape of it doesn't really fit with the rest of the machine. You know, we've had the same body style since 2014, the same drivetrain in this rancher. Really has been around since almost 2008, 2007. Now they've of course done tweaks to it and they've revised and redone it a couple times. But I think it'd be nice if maybe they go up to like a 450 possibly and bring the 500 to maybe like a, the 520 up to like a 550. I hope you all did enjoy this video. Be sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you are new. It really helps the channel out and I appreciate it. Check out my website down below if you want to see more of my videos or even check out my main channel here and look at my other videos that I've posted. But share what your thoughts are on the Ranch and Foreman. I'm sure most of you watching already own a Rancher or a Foreman. Maybe you're upgrading or maybe it's a first time machine for you. So let me know what you think if you got any questions down below. As always, I look forward to responding to all of you. So you guys all have a great day. Bye.